So we have our player moving up, down, left and right, but he's going to be interacting with tiles soon. And what we want to do is figure out what the heck tile he's actually interacting with. So this one's going to be a little bit trickier. What we really want is to have this kind of yellow sprite up here on the tile that our robot is on. So I'm going to get rid of the green here because we're going to want this clear. And one thing we can do to just really basically mock this up is we'll just say SPR, this is sprite four. Let's just do player dot X comma player Y. Now this isn't going to be exactly what we want, but it's going to give us an idea. So we have this kind of yellow selection around where our player is. But what we want to do is have this kind of snap to our grid system. Now how do we do that? Well, let's set up some variables here. And let's actually just put this in the same tab. We'll just say um, tile select. And I think in our update, maybe after we move our player, we're gonna set a global variable that we're gonna be able to access with a bunch of stuff because we're gonna use this tile selection a lot. Basically what we need to do is uh, let's just, let's make a, let's actually in our initialize player, let's make a tile table. There's so many ways you could do this, but this, this works. Let's just say X equals, let's just say player X divided by eight, all right? And then Y equals player dot Y divided by eight. What that's going to do is convert this pixel data. So this is 63 pixels over, 63 pixels down. That's gonna convert that to tile data because each tile is eight pixels across. So when we divide it where our player is by eight, that's going to give us the tile. And it's actually going to give us a float value, so a decimal value. And I think we probably don't need to put this in initialize. Let's put this in update player. I think that'll work just fine. So tile equals that. And then let's just print tile.x and then print tile y, just to make sure this is working. Save run. Okay. So down there in the lower left hand corner, we can see the tile value of our guy, but it's giving us that decimal value. So what we really want is to round that down. So the way to do that is FLR for floor. Let's just put this in parentheses here and that's gonna round this down. So if it's 8.659, it's just going to be eight. Okay, save run. Now we have tile seven, tile eight, good. Okay, so we have our tiles being represented in full numbers, that's good. And so now instead of having this sprite be player X and player Y, let's actually have this tile.x and tile.y. And what that will do is use those tile values as pixel values. And so that's not gonna be quite what we want, but let's look at what we're doing here. As we move over, we can see the selection is up in the upper left-hand corner, kind of moving around because it's taking however many tiles we are moving and it's moving that many pixels, which isn't quite what we want. So what we really wanna do is multiply this by eight. Now, why did we divide by eight and then multiply by eight? Well, we're dividing by eight and then cutting off the extra with this floor. So what this is gonna do is just snap to the tile that the player is over. So save run. So look at this. Now we are snapping to our tiles. Now it's not quite the right tile. What we really need to do is kind of offset this a little bit because what it's doing is using the upper left-hand corner of that sprite to pick the tile, which doesn't really make sense for what we're doing. What we actually want is kind of this part right here. And so this is one, two, three, four, five pixels over and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pixels down. So actually let's say player X plus five and player Y plus seven. And let's put those in parentheses or else it'll divide that seven by eight before it adds. We wanna add before we divide, okay? Save run. And now we have it selecting right under where our player is. That's cool. I think we actually maybe take this over just one more, plus six and maybe down one, eight. Save run. So now we have a nice selection that feels pretty natural, I would say. It's really easy to select the tile that we want. That's looking pretty good. Okay, great. Now we don't need to worry about printing our tiles anymore. Save run, good. Yes, very good. So now anytime we wanna select a tile, we know exactly what tile we're selecting and we have a global variable tile.x and tile.y that we can use for all kinds of other stuff, namely switching out these tiles with other tiles. And that's what we're gonna be doing next time. That's all for today. By the way, if you're new to Pico 8, we have a free Pico 8 Essentials Workshop available right here. And if you wanna watch all the videos in this series, there's a playlist right here. See you next time.